So this week I'm going to be doing something that I never thought I'd be doing on Bite Sized. Reviewing a smartphone game. The game is called Plague Inc. And before you ask, I have not been contacted by the company. They haven't asked me to do this. I just heard about this game and once I found out what it was, I had to try it out. No, I don't consider myself a gamer, but the premise of the game is that you are a bacteria or a virus and you are trying to infect and kill the entire world. And it has some scientific problems and I'll get to those, including the one large one in a minute. But I think that the ideas that you have to use to complete the game are pretty interesting in regards to how diseases are transmitted. Now you start off by infecting one person and you get to choose the country in which you infect that person. Now thinking about the countries in this game is really important because you're given a world map, but depending on how wealthy a country is, that determines how much health care its citizens have access to. And so the level of health care determines how quickly an infection will spread. So if you start off in a wealthy country or if your infection eventually reaches a wealthy country, it might have to evolve some antibiotic resistance or antiviral resistance to allow it to spread in a country with adequate health care. So this brings us to the things that you can choose about your disease. And these are things that you have to think of about disease transmission in the real world how it's transmitted, what its symptoms are, and what its abilities are. And so you can choose to have this disease transmitted in insects, in birds, in rodents, you can have it transmitted on air, or you can have it be a waterborne disease. And those are all things that you would really have to consider. And similarly, you can have this disease cause different symptoms. So if someone is coughing, you might want to make it an airborne disease. Um, it can end up, the symptoms go from everything, you start off with things that are like coughing and rashes and you end up with things that are like total organ failure and pneumonia and really vicious things. So to me, this is a really interesting strategy game because you have to really think about how diseases are transmitted. So my normal strategy is to make sort of a low-lying disease that people don't really notice. Maybe there's a little bit of coughing, maybe there's a little bit of sneezing. I make it airborne, I make it birdborne, so it starts spreading and people are spreading it to each other and it gets all the way around the world, but it's not really cause for concern yet. If you start off with a disease that's instantly making people die, well, the world starts to work on a cure, the humans catch on. So I try and make something a little bit sneaky. And then once I've infected most of the world, bam, that's when I snap in the total organ failure. And then the world comes crashing down before people have had a time to make a cure that will effectively cure them. And you have all these stats going along, you know, number of humans infected, number of humans dead, and it sounds morbid and it actually is when you really think of it, but it's really cool strategy of how you go from starting with one infected person to infecting the entire world and then bringing them down. Now if you're savvy, you realize that my strategy is the biggest scientific hole in this game because that's not how things evolve. So let's think about this from the beginning. You infect your first person. Let's say that they are just coughing. When they cough on somebody else, patient number two is also just coughing they cough on somebody else, and now patient number three is coughing, and then inside that person it mutates so that they're coughing and sneezing. Well, this means that on person number four, after person number three coughs on them, person number four will also cough and sneeze. But it does not mean that persons one and two will cough and sneeze. Because when something evolves, you know, your little disease decides to mutate. That means that going forwards, it will carry that mutation onto all the new people that it infects. However, it does not mean that the people previously infected are somehow going to suddenly start sneezing too. That's not how these things work. So if I want to play the game by infecting the entire world with coughing, and then I click the little total organ failure button in the game, if it was realistic, it would mean that that person in whom the disease goes from coughing to sudden total organ failure, crazy, I know. From then on, anyone that they infected would also have total organ failure, but all the people who have previously been infected by just coughing, they're still gonna be just coughing. So is it scientifically accurate? No, it's not. But it's a really cool sort of game, and it gets you thinking about how viruses spread. You know, you can watch little airplanes move, and if you've made a virus that's really good at spreading in dry air, you know, it'll spread to wherever those airplanes are going. And you have to think about the countries and the healthcare in them, and you have to think about whether or not you're spreading something by insects, you know, or if you're spreading it by rodents in a very urban area. So there are a lot of different factors that go into how a disease spreads, and I think the game does a pretty good job of thinking of all of those different things. And so, is it scientifically 100% spot on? No, but is it a good way to start thinking about how diseases are indeed spread and what factors you have to think of? Yeah, I think it's kind of cool. So I've spent a good amount of time in the past couple days thinking up strategies of how to evolve a disease to take over the world. 
it's been pretty cool. And I think while it's not 100% scientifically accurate, it might be an interesting way for teachers to get their students interested in thinking of the concepts of how diseases are transmitted and what different things you have to think about when modeling a disease. It's not perfect, it's not spot on, but it's pretty interesting. So this week, go forth, play some games, and do science. But the premise of this game is that you are a bacteria or a plane. You're not a plane. That'd be cool if you were a plane. I'd like to be a plane sometimes.